we welcome you all for this wonderful time of worship what a privilege to be in the presence of god a god is a faithful god who loves us the verse says like this when god was calling samuel he said here i am when he called moses he said here i am we are here to worship god this morning and say to god here i am to worship you jesus let's bow down our heads and give all our praises to god and say this morning here i am o oh god let's close our eyes and before the presence of god and say to god here i am o oh god we going to worship god this morning because he is a god who promised that he is always with us he promised to joshua that i'll be with you forever and ever what a wonderful god he is jesus and say here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god we all together worthy all together love we all together wonderful to lift hands and say to god here i am to bow down before you god i am to say you are my god you're all together loving all together worthy all together wonderful to me so Say, God. 
say like this 46 1 verse he says God is our refuge and strength and he is our ever present help in all our days of trouble he is our refuge he is our fortress he is a friend who helps us in the right time Let's worship the God and say, you are my refuge. Then lift your hands and say to God. Let's open our mouth and confess God. Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my everything. Here I am. Use me, O oh God. to God.
said to God this morning? When God called Isaiah, he said, Here I am, O God. I come before you. Here I am. You use me, O God. Use me as a salt to bless so many people of this world. An awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. Stump power and love of God is an awesome God. Let's see. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. Stump power and love of God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. We some power and love of God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. We some power and love of God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. He's done power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Let's sing it. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. He's done power and love. Our God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. Some power and love, my God is an awesome God. One more time to go. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above. Some power and love, our God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love of God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an Awesome God. You are the awesome God. You are the faithful one. We just want to give ourselves and say, Here I am. Here we are, God, before your presence. We are nothing without your presence. We are nothing without you, O oh God. We humble ourselves as a holy sacrifice this morning. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We bow before you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's be seated. I just give the remaining time to our dear pastor. Let's welcome him. What a great joy and honor to worship the Lord in his presence. I would like to thank Pastor Daniel and the team for leading us into wonderful time of praise and worship. I also thank each one of you for making time to come and sit and worship the Lord and hear his word. I would like to begin today's worship by reading Isaiah chapter 
43 verses 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do not perceive it. I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Let us pray. Our heavenly gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for protecting us and giving us an opportunity to come to your presence and to worship you and to honor you and glorify you, Lord. Lord, we are here sitting eagerly wanted to listen from you. Holy Spirit, you minister to us. Guide us and lead us. We ask this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, I would like to talk about uh, times of transition that we all go through in life. When I say transitions, it means it can be any, any experiences that brings a sudden change or a significant change in our life. It can be uh, spiritual, it can be uh, physical, it can be emotional or mental, whatever changes that can bring into our life. And those experiences I just, I'm just talking about as transitions. And we are all have to go through these transitions. Now, my question is, uh, sometimes, you know, these transitions are very scary and very painful. And sometimes we have to go through a lot of sufferings because of these transitions. My question is that, why did God allow us to go through that transitions in our life? Yes, transitions sometimes, it's a God's way. You know, when we see in the creation that before God could create anything, it was formless, darkness, chaotic, and nothing was beautiful. But God speaks and says, let there be light. And takes the earth for a six days of transitions to make a beautiful creation. For me, that is a transition. You know, like even if you take a human body, you know, David says, Lord, you saw my, you know, unformed body. It means even when we are fetus, you know, God sees. And we see that from the fetus, how the baby, and from the baby, how the human beings we become. Now, this is kind of a transition. You know, even like our entire skeletal structures, uh, kind of regenerates every three months and our entire brain replaces its every two months and the entire human body right from the last autumn replaces five to seven years. It means we see there is a kind of transitions always happening in our life. But when we see also spiritually in God's calling, whenever God calls a people, Example, we, we see Abraham. When God called Abraham as to go through a kind of a transition, which is painful, he got to leave his family, neighborhood, house, maybe favorite things. He got to leave and go to the place where God is sending him. It's a transition. I think I see, like whenever God calls people in the Bible, he either first asks them into a transition and then calls them. Or sometimes God calls them and gives them a transition. So transition and God's call goes in hand in hand. Sometimes God has to take people into transition to reaffirm the calling that he has got in their life. When Jesus called disciples, he called them to become a fishers of man. Now, before they could become officials of man, they had to go through a transition period of time, three and a half years, so that he can take them in this time of transition. But whatever transition that you are going to today, be mindful of that, that God has a plan in your life. There are some times that these transitions can cause anxiety, fear, Pain and uncertainty, sometimes loneliness. But don't be afraid. The God has a plan for our life. When we read Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11, God says there, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, 
not to harm you, plans to give you hope and future. Now God has a plan. Plan not to harm you, but to prosper you. He wants to give you hope and the future. And he has a plan for you. And God's plans are always beautiful. So we, in order to go through that plans and achieve that plans, God can use this transition that you are going you today. Now what all the transition that you are going through, and God will take you through that and be bold in that. Transitions sometime, not sometime, most of the time can produce greater understanding. When we go through the times of transitions, and it can give us a lot of understanding. Understanding of God, understanding of his will, of his scripture, of his kingdom, of his church, and sometimes the good understanding of ourselves, and the family, the society that we go through. Because this transitions pauses us, allows us some time to just to stop what we are doing allows us to stop from our routine work and then allows us to think. Transition sometimes makes us think differently, which results in a good thing. We see a Job as a classic example of this. A Job was a very wealthy man, he's a just millionaire. Now, you know the story what happened? Over the night he lost everything. He, he just lost his family. He lost his wealth, he lost everything. Even he lost his health. Now he's on the street. Now even in that circumstances, now what he says, chapter one, verses 21. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken. May the name of the Lord be praised. What a wisdom we see. What an understanding of life that we see. Verse 22, he says, In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. He was not blaming God for his transitions. Just even though he is going through a lot of pain of bankruptcy, the sufferings of bankruptcy, but he was not blaming God. Instead, he was praising God, saying that the Lord has given and he has taken. And he is just praising the Lord. He is just honoring the Lord. Yes, it is true. The transitions can give us a lot of understanding of life. It illuminates us. It is elevates us. It gives us a new insights to understand things better when we go through transitions. So that's the reason whenever some transitions happens in our life, let us not panic. Let us not lose hope. Let us not run away from the situation. Let us not go and you know, do all sorts of things in vain. Instead, when the transition happens, when we see something that's happening which is not very pleasant, something is, some changes is happening in our life which we didn't like it, but whatever it may be, let us ask God, Lord, I don't understand what's happening around me. I just wanted to hold your hands. Lead me, Lord. And that should be our prayers today. I would like to read 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Peter says here, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Don't be surprised as the painful things that's happening around you. You might be thinking, what is this strange? What did I did wrong? Why these things are happening? You know, don't think in that way. Instead, you what you have to do, verse 13 he says, but rejoice that you participate in the suffering of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. What a beautiful verse. Yes, we have to be overjoyed when the transitions are happening around us because they can give us greater understanding of things that is happening around us. Transitions can shape good character in us. 
God can take some of the transitions to give us godliness, holiness, kindness, purity. Now these things are very very helpful. You know God can give us into that lead us into you know good character. We just now saw Job when he lost everything when he was on street. You know what was the response of his wife chapter 2 verses 9 she said His wife said to him are you still holding on to your integrity? Are you still holding on to your integrity so she sees that that this man still faithful and he was still holding on to god and he was still didn't lose the hope he was looking at god and she she sees him and says that are you still holding the integrity and she also says that curse god and die but the response of job is different he says verse 10 he replied you are talking like a foolish woman shall we accept good from god and not trouble so what we see here that job was responding to her positively patiently he was having a, a good character and conduct and he knows how to behave a job behaves well even in that time of great loss and pain and uncertainty and you know that's what we see that happens when we go through times of transition it's like eagle you know the average eagle lives 60 to 70 years you know when it is 40 years you know because of the heaviness in the feather and then the the problem with the nails it cannot fly higher it can't take his food so the eagle decides to go through a times of transition it goes to higher places in the mountain and stays there for the time of renewing plucking all its old feather and the nails and waits there to renew herself to get new feathers and the and the nails so that it can soar higher fly higher that is the reason that it it allows itself to go through that transition the so transitions can give us a new strength transitions are like pruning the tree when you prune the tree it gives a good fruit the transitions can be like that so god allows such transitions my dear friends now what is the transition that you are going through it can be a sufferings it can be persecution it can be any difficult situation that you are going today and you might be having lost of questions but god can use your transitions to fix things right in your life to give you greater understanding and then shape your character all we need to do is to give ourselves to god roman chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 it says not only so but we also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character the character hope and the hope does not disappoint us because god as poured out is love into our heart by the holy spirit whom he he has given us what a beautiful thing you now all these sufferings leads us into good character you know many years ago i think in the year 2001 i met with an accident and broke my vein in my left hand and i was hospitalized and then doctors has to do a major surgery on me i could not use my hand for more than a year and a half and during that time god took me to the face of transition i have to go through a lot of pain i could not sleep many 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 nights because of the pain i was taking a lot of pills to subsidize my pain but most of the nights were not working out many nights i thought that i may die but god took that painful moment 
to shape me and talk to me and, and allow me to learn the godliness during that time. You know, today you might be going through the hardship of life. You might be facing a lot of troubles by others. You might have a question, why these things are happening to me? Why the things are happening like this around me? You, know, you might be having a lot of questions. Now God is ever present in your life. He can take you through these times of transitions. He can use those transitions to fix things all right, to give you the greater understanding and then also shape you and mold you. So that's the reason. Let us not lose hope. Instead, ask God to minister to us because our God promised that he will do the new things in our life. Even in our salvation, the Bible says when we come to the Lord Jesus and accept him as a Lord and Savior, we become new creations. So God is requiring us to go through this transition, a spiritual transition, so that we become a better person. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for the beautiful time that you gave to us to listen to your word, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand that all the transitions are not just from Satan or from my wrongdoing, that you too allow the transitions in our life. Lord, today I pray for dear friends who are listening today and viewing this live stream, Lord. Bless them. Lord, heal them. Those who are having a question, why these things are happening to me? Why these things are happening to my family? Why I have to shift? Why I'm losing my job, Lord? Whatever questions they have, I pray that you answer them. Minister to their heart and use those transitions to fix things all right in their life. And to give a greater understanding of the life that you gave to them, Lord. And also shape them and mold them and give them a divine character to them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking good to us. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to us. You lead us and guide us, Lord. We give you all glory and honor in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.